Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video we are going to build this spaceship flying in front of a sun shot. So before we get into the meat of this tutorial, I want to tune you in to someone who is both an expert in hit film and in Blender. His name is Frank, but he goes by the handle SpiderHank on the forums. And I am going to leave a link to his thread uh, on the forums in the description below. And you really want to follow this carefully because some of the things that he is doing are absolutely incredible. What he has done is he has a YouTube channel and I will leave a link in the description below to that also where he is showing off and demonstrating different things that he is doing where he has created um, project files in Blender complete with models and uh, lighting, cameras and movement and, and, and the works. And then he is converting those files into hit film and he wrote a script and this is his website and I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description below to this because he is giving this script away for free and this script basically converts a hit film or sorry a blender file into a hit film project file so that then you can continue to enhance that video shot and it is really exciting he's still working on it and it is coming along beautifully but the concept that i am doing today i learned from him so you definitely want to subscribe to his youtube channel as he continues to develop this project so we are going to use a technique that is known as render passing. Before we do that, I want to point out that I have these uh, models sitting in a folder. And I'm going to go ahead and put a card up here in the upper right hand corner. If you want to go and learn how to make these models, I'm going to use the same Orville model that I made previously. What I am going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new composite shot and this composite shot will essentially be my base render, okay? So I'm going to call it base and it will only be 10 seconds long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a camera on it and then I will split to a two view, you know, kind of a look here so that I sort of can see where the camera is and I'm just going to move the camera uh, maybe to about there, you know, just off center 400. Uh, and then I'm going to create a new point and it will be a three dimensional point. And I'm just going to call this the camera align point, I think. And I will, um, let's see, I'm just going to have it go, uh, maybe say from negative uh, 1000 to, I mean, it's just, you know, I, this is all sort of arbitrary to, to, I'm keyframing it to move across the screen. Okay. So it just sort of is moving. And then what I will do is, is I will take the camera under the controls tab, layer properties. I can say align towards a layer and the layer that it's going to align will be the, uh, camera line point. So now the camera points at that wherever it goes. Okay. And this is going to be my base shot, my base render or composite. And then everything out of in this shot will be built out of this base. Okay. So back to the media, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and I'm going to rename it, um, Orville. Okay. And in the Orville shot, I am just going to bring in the Orville model. Okay. And then I will under models, Orville transform. I will transform to the camera align point. And if I open that up, I'll zero it out. And now I have this situation where the Orville is moving along. Oh, you know what? I have a problem in that it is moving the wrong way, isn't it? I tell you what, I have an idea. Let's go back to the base and uh, we're just going to flip these. So that one will be there and this one will be there. And I'll do the same here in the Orville shot. And that way, uh, it, it'll be a lot easier than trying to go the other direction, right? So, all right. So now I basically have this 
Orville ship passing. And you know what? I do have one thing I think I want to do also. And that is I think I want to raise the camera up maybe um, about 100, uh, 100 pixels. Yeah. So now it's, yeah, it's sort of looking down on it. I think that'll look more cooler, right? Let me change that as well uh, here in the base shot. 100. Okay. All right. So now the base shot and the camera, uh, the Orville shot are basically the same. And I'm noticing that I have... I have spelled Orville wrong. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is is I'm going to start building the shot. I'm going to start with the background, okay? So I'm going to right-click on the Orville, say duplicate it, and I'm going to rename it background. Uh, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to get rid of the Orville model. And instead, I'm going to add a plane and... Under that plane, I will first add the fractal noise effect. And I will open that up. And under preset, I will choose star field. Okay. And then, let me go back to Uno view. And then, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to add the 360 video or 360 viewer. And then if I just make a little bit of an adjustment, maybe something like that. And so now we have the background. Okay, so the, the camera's moving and that's it. That's the background right there. Okay, following the spaceship, just imagine it being there. Okay, all right, now we're going to add the sun background. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that. And I'm going to just call, rename this one sun. And I will open it up. And each one of these are a different composite shot, so keep that in mind. The plane, I'm going to uh, remove the fractal noise effect, and I'm just going to reset the viewer. And I'm going to find the light flare effect and drop it in above the, the viewer. And if I go to halfway through the shot, um, I'm going to use a sun spike. At least that's what I've planned on doing and I think I will zero this out and then I want to bring it over so that it's sitting yeah, about right there and maybe down just a little bit I think that looks pretty good so like that now what I'm going to do is cheat temporarily and go back to my Orville shot and I'm just going to bring in the sun so that I can sort of tell where it's at in the shot. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Could be maybe a smidgen lower. Nah, I think it'll be fine. All right, let's go with that. Okay. And so now we have the sun, the sun shot, right? Okay, so now we want to make the, or the lights of the Orville and the engine. All right, so I'm going to use the Orville um, composite shot as my uh, starting point, so I'll duplicate that, and I'm going to refer to that as lights. And if I open it up, the Orville model I am going to get rid of, and instead I'm going to bring in the lights model. And opening this up under models, I'm going to transform from the camera align point, and I am going to zero this out. So now I have the lights coming along, okay? And I probably want to add a, say, a glow effect to it just to have them light up a little bit more. And, you know, I don't want it to be too much. Um, maybe expand this a little bit, go a little higher. Something like that probably will... Yeah, I want maybe just a little bit, a little bit more than that. What do you think? Let me go all the way up to five, but then I can uh, just expand this to draw. Yeah, let's go with that. All right. And... Okay, let's go with that. 
Uh, and, you know, I would tweak that and whatnot. So now I have my render pass of the Orville lights. And now we're just going to make the Orville engines. So again, I can use the base Orville sh shot as my starting point. And I'm just going to rename it engines. And I will open it up. And again, I will get rid of the Orville model. And I will bring in the engines model. And again, you can uh, uh, see my other video on how I actually created that. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before and with the other one. And of course, you can't see the engines until you come around and the engines are on the back side. And I'm just going to add a glow effect to that to make it a little nicer here. Um, we're going to ramp this up. And then I'm just going to take the threshold up high enough where it isn't... Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I think I'll add a gleam effect just to, you know, make it look cool. Yeah, little lights flaring off of that. And that ought to do it. Okay, so now I have all of the everything, right? So we're going to tie it all together, okay? So we're going to start by bringing in the background... So now we have the background behind it. Okay, and I don't have to change the blend mode of that because it's the bottom layer. Okay, now I'm going to bring in the sun behind it. Okay, but that one covers off the background. So I will have to right click blend mode of add. So now the background uh, layer is visible behind it. All right, now we're going to go ahead and at this point light this scene. So I what I want to do is... Uh, I want two views and I want basically to be able to, I want to put my, um, my light where that sun is. Okay. So, and I'm going to use this to help do that. So I'm going to add a new layer and it will be a light layer. And what I want to do is I want to put the light next to the Orville. Okay. Because if I don't put it next to the Orville, let's say I put it down here, then this two-dimensional object will separate the light from the model and therefore it will uh, re remove the light's influence on the model, right? So I'm going to put that there and then I'm just going to push this way back in space and I'm going to bring it down and I'm just going to be essentially put it exactly where the flare is. So now if I sort of step through, going backwards, you can see... And going forward, you can see, right? Now, the entire thing is backlit now, <laughs> okay? And so I think maybe I want to add a little bit of a fill light. So what I think I'll do is add a second light model. Uh, and this will be sort of the fill light. I'll What I'm going to uh, do is just pull it back. And I think, um, yeah, maybe say 30 thousand back and then I'm gonna put it lower because I think I want it to only kind of light the bottom uh, but I definitely don't want it to be that bright I, I really want to come down to the point where it's just sort of barely lighting so that you can still see some of the details of the ship even though you know, I mean, in, in technically, it probably would be totally backlit, right? Okay, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and add in our lights, and it will go above the model. And then, if I right-click on it and change the blend mode to add, you can see now the lights have been added to the uh, shot. And if I move forward far enough where you would actually be able to see the engine... You can see the engine is not lit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the engine and drop it on here. And again, same thing. I'm just going to change the blend mode to add so that the engine lights are now on and even the gleam and stuff happens, right? And that's pretty much it. So you can see that I have created several render passes, one for the background, one for the sun, one for the Orville itself one for the lights and one for the engines. There's one more thing actually I do want to do and that is is right now it looks like the Orville is just sitting in front of that as if it's like a picture in front of a picture. It's just sort of been cut out and so you really want it to interact a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light wrap effect 
and I'm going to take that light wrap and I'm going to put it on the Orville model itself. And then opening it up, I'm going to source the sun layer. And then I'm just going to up the radius until I feel like there's a lot of wrap there. And you can really see that the sun is interacting now with the model itself. Yeah, I think that's going to work about somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, that, that sort of would depend on your shot. And so when you've done all that, then you end up with a shot that looks like this. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.